Do you wish your organization had an artifact repository? A common place where you can upload a jar file so you can easily add it to your MuleSoft project. Some drivers such as from Oracle and IBM are notorious for not being available in publicly accessible repositories. This forces us to deal with these dependency jars manually. Whether that's commit them to your source code, store them on shared drives, or install them on your server, there isn't really a good alternate solution. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use the AnyPoint Exchange, whose backend is a Maven-based repository, to store these libraries. Then we will easily add and use them inside our MuleSoft application. We're inside our AnyPoint Studio, and today we're gonna to be working on Studio version 7.4.2 and the Mule Runtime 4.2.2. The first thing I want to do is just do a refresher on how Maven works inside our MuleSoft projects to download dependencies. So when we create a new project, our palm.xml file is pre-populated with a bunch of settings. It's everything we need for our bare bones mule application that they give us. So they give us the mule maven plugin and this is a requirement for what we're going to show today. It automatically adds two dependencies and they're from the group ID org.mule so they're custom mule soft artifacts. They're actually what they call mule plugins and we'll get into this a little bit later. And then they list two repositories. The AnyPoint Exchange, which contains a lot of the artifacts that we get from the AnyPoint Exchange. And then the MuleSoft Releases repository, which is a publicly available repository from MuleSoft, which has a lot of artifacts, such as the Mule Maven plugin. So Maven is what they call a dependency management system. So kind of the history of it is over the years, people realized that most applications were using the same type of functionality or people were writing the same code over and over again. So what ended up happening is people create, created external libraries. So they took that common code, put it in libraries, and then shared it with other people so that it was a level of abstraction. So people didn't have to write it again. They could just trust this third party library or jar to do what it was supposed to do. And because everybody used it, any bugs got found out really quickly and it was much better than trying to write it from scratch and getting it all perfect the first time. And then that idea started to grow and then more and more and more people started creating libraries, dependencies, jar files, artifacts, whatever you wanna call them. And applications just started exploding with the number of dependencies in each project. So a system needed to be created to manage all these dependencies. And that's where Maven came in and now they're, they're what they call a dependency management system. So what happens is like publicly available libraries can be found on a website called Maven Repo, mvnrepository.com. And you can see here they have 17.8 million artifacts. So this is publicly available and pretty much anything you need to do, there's a library for it. So for example, say uh, we wanted to search, uh, what was it, JSON. So JSON library from Google, what you do is you search on it. Um, there's lots of different versions. Um, you can see here every time there's a new version, Google will update their latest one. So there's one in October 2009, 2.8.6. You click on it and it gives you the code to add to your palm file. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the dependency. Indent it. So we're saying that, hey, all right, we need the code or the functionality that this library provides. Let's add it to our dependency. And then if all I have to do is click the save button and you can see it, um, any point studio was doing a whole bunch of downloads. And now if I look on my left side here under project libraries, 
you can see that the project, the jar file was downloaded from the Maven repository off the web and now it, it exists inside my project. And now I can use all, all the classes that it provides. So there's a little file path here. This is called their local repository. So, so a copy gets installed into your local repository, which comes with any installation of Maven. So you don't always have to be connected to the internet or being a burden on the Maven repo servers. So I could go to this URL. There's my repository. Two dot eight dot six was downloaded. Nine oh eight it is nine oh eight. That's the date today. So now I have a copy of the jar file locally. So now I could run the server quickly and it doesn't have to download anything from the internet. It can just take this library from my local machine and it's much quicker to build. And that's another advantage of using the Maven repository is now um, if I was to build this project, say on a build pipeline, wherever it is, it can now go fetch that from the repository and I don't have to deal with the file itself. This file only gets used from my local machine when I'm when I'm running the project locally. But on a build server, it can go to the Maven repo and download the file itself. That saves me having to check in this file into my source code repository so that it's available for the for the build job. Or what I've seen people do is take a library and put it on the server themselves and then they just flag Maven that say, hey, this dependency will be there when you deploy. So don't fail the build job when it's compiling. By default, Maven always searches their MVM repository.com for any repositories. That's why we didn't have to specify it in these repository item list here. Now let's see how we can add a dependency from the AnyPoint exchange into our MuleSoft project. So if I go to the AnyPoint platform, this is just a test account I created, a free account. And I go to exchange and go to all assets. These are all the assets that MuleSoft provides for free. So I could just type in say Salesforce. Uh, where's the actual connector? Mule 4. So if my Mule project needs a Salesforce connector, what I can do here is find it on the exchange, click dependency snippets, and there it is. Just like the Maven repository gives me dependency to add to my project. So I copy it and put it into the dependencies tab. And what you should, when I save it, instead of going to the Maven repository, because this artifact won't exist there, it'll then search the AnyPoint exchange for it there. And when it finds it there, it'll download it. So you'll see it pop up on the left once I save it. Down and there it is, Salesforce 10.4.0. And MuleSoft has a nice feature that they'll do this, they do this automatically. So if you're working on your canvas, you've probably noticed and just type in Salesforce and just move a connector here, a whole bunch of stuff builds and compiles. Well, if after that you go back into your palm file, you'll notice that this just showed up automatically and saved it, and the file automatically shows up. So you don't have to do it that way because MuleSoft provides you a shortcut, but it's just an explanation of what's really happening behind the scenes. So a light may go off in your head saying downloading an artifact from the AnyPoint exchange is very similar to downloading one from the Maven central repository. Is AnyPoint exchange a Maven repository? And the answer is that's exactly what it is. If you go into the documentation, you'll see that they even call it any point exchanges Maven facade. So Maven clients can publish and consume exchange assets, pretty much what you can do with a normal artifactory repository. And in older versions of MuleSoft, you'd actually, when you specify the URL in the repository, there used to be a slash nexus. So that was a clue that the product that MuleSoft has running this is the Sonatype Nexus repository which is a pretty popular artifactory repository. 
up with the other big ones like uh, JFrog. So going back to the exchange, it's not just about downloading MuleSoft provided assets. They've actually built a pretty robust system around the exchange that you can access using Maven and APIs. So the documentation has, has lots of examples of how you can publish an asset to the exchange using Maven. So doing like a build deploy job that goes to Maven. How you can search using API calls and using the graph API to, to log in with an, one API, the authorization API, and then searching um, what assets are in your exchange. And also, MuleSoft Exchange provides you with two types of visibility on your assets. So you can do publicly available assets that MuleSoft provides. You can create your own asset and then make it publicly available. Or you can just have your own asset and just have it private to people that you allow using the access management settings. So here's an example. So this is I created a faxes API. I went to publish new asset, asset type REST API, uploaded a, just a random RAML file that I pulled off the internet, and then hit publish, and this created this asset here. I could download this if I want as a connector, as just a RAML file, which is just how I uploaded it, just a, downloads a zip, and then inside the zip is my RAML that I created. Or according to the documentation, I could download this project into my MuleSoft API. And that's where I came up with the idea that I'm going to show you in this video. So I've worked at many organizations where we don't have a repository. Repositories are expensive. It's a monthly cost. And unless you're really like deploying your every build you make that artifact to a Nexus repository, it's not really worth the cost. But in a few places, I just wish that I had a place that I could put like a library that's not on the Maven repository. For me, using Oracle drivers have always been a pain to me. So Oracle has been famous for not putting their drivers on a Maven repository. However, I have heard that they are starting to put some of their newer driver versions on the central repository. IBM is also notorious for this. So if I want to get an Oracle driver, what I have to do is I have to go to their web page. I got to choose a driver. And then I have to accept their licensing agreement, which is probably why they don't have it publicly available because they want to make sure that you accept the agreement. And they also want you to log in probably to track you. So the question now is what do I do with this driver. I physically have it on my machine and I don't have a repository to upload it to so that my palm file can use it as a dependency. I can install it locally to my repository, but nobody else has it. So when the build job doesn't have access to it, and if someone else is, needs to work on the project that I'm working on, they'll have to download this driver themselves and then put it into their local repository, which is a headache. That also creates sometimes version mismatches. So if people just download the latest, then you, you could break the existing functionality of the code and not even realize it. So I've seen these files being passed around on shared drives and, and through chat messages whenever someone's working on a project for the first time. However, what I discovered playing around with the AnyPoint Exchange Maven facade is that there's many different types of exchange assets. And if I go back to my exchange list and go publish new asset, and go to asset types, they have one called custom, which allows me to upload files of many different file types. And if I go to the list here, it tells you the full gamut. And if you go to compress files, there's dot jars, which is interesting because my Oracle database is a jar file. So what if I was to upload my Oracle driver? Give it a name called Oracle driver. Eight. And these are the values that I enter into my palm file. And this is my group ID. I can't actually change it, but this is my ID of my organization in any point platform. So if I go into access management of the platform, click on my organization, and you'll see that's my organization here. It ends with 362 and 362. So that's where you got that number from. 
Asset ID, I'll make it something a little easier. In version, you can put anything you want, but of course I wanted to have a good naming convention. So I actually ended up downloading driver version, I believe it was four, if I get this right, two, two, two. And then if I just save it, it's now becomes on my asset list as Oracle driver eight, and it's a custom asset. That was actually the easy part. The tough part was figuring out how to download it through my Maven Palm file. There's actually a lot of documentation on how to consume an exchange asset with Maven. However, there were some errors in here, like this repository URL is incorrect now. So it will help you with a few things, but there was a link at the very bottom, Maven Facade API, which had some up-to-date information on what is their V2. I won't bore you with the details because my videos are always way too long, but basically what you have to do is add a new repository in your Palm file, which is your private repository, not the publicly available one that everyone has. And that's this code right here. You have to change out this organization ID to the organization ID that I showed earlier. And this ID is very important. We'll talk about that in a sec. And now the toughest part was what do we put as our dependency? And this was very tricky. We have the basic from when we created our asset inside AnyPoint Studio. So group ID was actually our organization ID. Artifact ID, we renamed it. Twelve dot two dot two was our version. But if we just save this, you'll notice that we will receive an error trying to download the asset. It actually took a bit of time to figure out what tags were missing. You have to go back to this document, type in consuming REST APIs, where it talked about using a type element as well as a classifier. And then figuring out which one I needed was very difficult. And it actually, what helped was if I go to Faxes API and down and click on download, in the bottom left corner, you can kind of see the URL that actually gets downloaded. And you can see at the very end, it's slash assets, and then the corporation ID, and then the artifact ID, and then there's like a fat ramble, and then a slash zip. So if, trying to piece that together, so it wouldn't be a slash zip because I'm downloading a jar file. So that kind of told me that, hey, I need my type to be jar because when I compare it to the Oracle driver eight download, you'll see that it's just custom slash jar. So the jar was the type and the word custom is where that fat ramble was in my faxes API asset. So if I put custom and now save that, Oh, and it did end up downloading it. So now you'll see this OJDBC 8.2.12.2.2-custom.jar file is now part of my project. So if I go to my local repository, you'll see now that this just popped up. So this is my group ID, and there's my artifact ID, there's my version, and there's my jar file. One thing I didn't mention is that because this is your private asset and you're downloading it from your own organization ID, Maven sub repository, you will have to enter your credentials to connect to the repository. You do this in Maven by modifying your settings XML file. So this is a file that comes by default. You can look up how to modify this or create a new one, but basically what you have to do is you set your credentials down here in the server section. So this was actually the ID that matched up to my Palm file. 
under the repository tag. This is the username and password. I just removed it, but this is the login for my AnyPoint Studio. Like literally what I type in when the pop-up comes to log into my AnyPoint platform. You may have to specify it depending how you set up your Maven. You may have to specify where AnyPoint Studio can find your settings file. So inside my user settings, I've overrided the user path and just set um, where my settings are and then it'll pop up. This is actually um, automatically popped up after it read my settings XML file. So now that I have my Oracle driver, what should I do now? Because I'm so grateful for all you viewers, I can't just leave the video like this. It's not complete end to end, plus it's clearly not long enough. So what I end up doing is installing an Oracle database for you. I went to oracle.com, downloaded, I believe it was Oracle 12C, installed it locally, just created a, a simple account. Created a simple database that just has a bunch of first names and last names in it and an ID. Now it's time to build our meal flow. Now this is the easy part. We're just going to create a basic listener. Basic non-secure port 8081. We're going to call this v1 slash customers. It's going to be a get logger just to make sure that we're in here. Request for get all customer. We're going to do our database select. Select our Oracle connection and it automatically picked up our Oracle driver. You can see our group ID from the tooltip our group ID, our artifact ID, and our version. If it doesn't pick it up, you can always just um, play around with dependency by modifying this or adding your group ID, artifact ID, and version in here. And if it creates two in the palm file, you can always just delete one of them. So now we're just gonna connect to our database. And now just a simple select. And now we get back an object from the database select. So we just need to transform it back to a response to the API. Let's save, run it and see what we get. Our application is started up and now I have a postman set up to call our get request of v1 customers which was the path that I set up on the default and local post server so if I put send I get the names of all the customers in the database meaning we're successful able to connect and query the Oracle database using our driver, which we downloaded from the AnyPoint platform Maven facade repository, which we were able to add by publishing a new asset using the, using the Cloud Hub interface. In summary, to put this all together, what this allows us to do, if we have a library, a jar, or anything that is a dependency of our application and our organization doesn't have a Maven repository subscription, we can piggyback off the AnyPoint platform Maven facade so we can easily across our team and our build jobs 
pull the dependency from the repository so we don't have to deal with the headaches of, of managing it manually. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in more tutorials on MuleSoft technology and API development, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.